How's it going guys? Welcome back to Chris and Mike's Tech Juices YouTube channel. We apologize for taking so long on the second video, but we've been out and about trying to get our hands on some cool tech to bring you some awesome content, and we've done just that. As you can see in my hand and in this box in front of me, I've got the MSI Z97A Gaming 6 motherboard. Packed with some pretty cool features, such as handling up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, with clock speeds handling up to 3300 MHz, and also capable of a three-way configuration with your graphics card. We'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors for lending us this board to do a review on, and their name is Reveltech. Reveltech is an online computer parts store who sells a variety of computer parts, server parts, and other gadgets and electronics. We're going to be leaving a link to their site in the description box below, as well as a link to go and purchase this motherboard. But before you go ahead and spend that hard-earned money, let's take a deeper look into what this bad boy can do. Let's get a bit nerdy. Looking at the aesthetics of the board firstly, you notice they went once again with the red and black colour scheme just like they did on their previous Gaming 5 board. And even though the red and black colour scheme is quite common among gaming boards, it doesn't seem to be getting old anytime soon and personally I do still like it. The second thing to catch your attention is definitely the Southbridge cooler with the MSI gaming badge on it. This is a key feature of a lot of the MSI's gaming boards and is absolutely stunning and I wouldn't want them to get rid of it anytime soon. Taking a look at the IO ports, we've got our Gaming 6 board at the bottom and our previous gen Gaming 5 MSI board on top. And one of the things you notice is that they've actually removed some of the USB 3 ports on the new gen Gaming 6. Which makes you wonder that's a bit of a downgrade, but when you actually come to think about it, most gamers don't use more than 2 or 3 USB 3 ports at a time. And with the internal USB 3 connector on the board itself, which you can use to connect up to four USB 3 ports in the front of your case, you actually realize it's not such a downgrade as you might think. Since we're talking about USB here, let's move over onto the star of the show, and that is the USB 3.1 Type-C connector on this board. Not only is this bad boy capable of handling double the data rate of standard USB 3.0 at 10 gigabits per second, it's also reverse pluggable which means that there is no incorrect orientation to plug a device into this port. And I don't know a single person who does not hate the fact that a standard flash drive with a type A USB connector needs to be turned around three times before you can plug it in. This port will also hopefully be adopted by all mobile devices, which will be a serious convenience for people wanting to share cables between each other and will also offer higher power output for faster charging on devices. Also another added feature to this is that it will offer much higher data speeds to external drives supporting USB 3.1. Unfortunately we don't have any USB 3.1 devices to test this port on, but hopefully we can get our hands on one and give it a test and show you guys exactly what this port is capable of. The next notable feature is the SATA Express ports and that's because they as well support 10 gigabits per second as opposed to the standard 6 gigabits on your normal SATA ports. However, don't get too excited about that yet. You've got to make sure you have got a new gen SSD to actually be fast enough to handle those ports or else you're not really going to see a difference at all. Since we're talking about fast ports here, let's talk about another one which as well is capable of 10 gigabits per second. This is your M.2 SSD port. This port will be used for your M.2 SSD drive, which is a very small form factor drive capable of extremely high speeds. In the near future, most gamers are going to have one of these drives, which is going to be storing their OS and critical applications, while your standard SSDs are slowly moving towards the direction of just being used to store media and less critical applications. Well, for all you overclockers out there, we did have an i7-4790K in this board. However, with our inadequate cooling, as well as the fact that this is our very first review hardware we've received from our sponsor, we did not do much overclocking as we did not want to overheat or break anything on this in our very first hardware review. But I do have a screenshot from a very reputable source of them scoring a 4.7 GHz mark with this CPU on this very board. So if your overclocking is what you want, then this board is certainly for you. Well guys, we'd like to thank you for watching our very first hardware review. We ask that you leave a like if you liked the video, a dislike if you disliked it, or if your opinion is in the grey area of like and dislike, leave a comment in the comment box below. We also ask that you subscribe so that you can stay posted on upcoming videos in the next few weeks. But from myself and Christopher and the star of the show, we'd like to say thanks 
and cheers.